After that, Stephanie McMahon is backstage with Dean Ambrose and the Usos. Um, yeah, you know, not, nothing really much to say here except she doles out punishments. Uh, the Usos don't get punished specifically, but uh, Jimmy's wife, Naomi, she gets punished because apparently she has to wrestle a match with one arm tied behind her back, which, okay, what did Naomi do wrong? Uh, and Dean Ambrose, his No, punishment... you don't understand, John. The authority is getting heat by punishing somebody that doesn't deserve it for something that somebody else did. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's a good thing I care about Naomi, too, because if it was the Usos, I really wouldn't have given a crap. Exactly. But, and I think that's kind of the point. But uh, Dean Ambrose's punishment is uh, he has to undergo a psych evaluation. I f- and- that, which ended up being some of the best segments of the night and easily the funniest segments of the night. Oh, absolutely. Without question. This uh, was WWE comedy done right, and I don't even think it has anything to do with them, because if this would have been a Roman Reigns or even, well, I think, I was going to say Kane, but I think if anyone else would have been able to pull this off, he probably would have been the one. But you know what I mean? Like, if it would have been anyone else other than, like I said, maybe Kane, because I just remember his anger management segments and they were amazing. But anyone else, it feels like this would have just felt like your typical, boring, like, eye roll worthy wwe comedy skit but it was ambrose and he made it amazing oh yeah he did he ran away with this absolutely and it's a good thing he did too because uh stephanie warns him you know if you don't pass you won't be in the royal rumble so we go from that to uh miz and miz Dow backstage they uh they pretty much just joke about the golden globes here and I, I think miz just pretty much puts himself over again but in the context of since the award show was last night uh pretty much saying how you know he deserves a golden globe and all that crap and then we go to our first segment, just like immediately after that, man. It's like rapid fire uh, with Ambrose and the doctor. Uh, the doctor says he wants to know what makes Ambrose tick. Uh, he tells Ambrose to sit back, relax, and reflect. Uh, the doctor then turns on a clock, and here I think Dean Ambrose is going to be hypnotized, but we just see him kind of in a daze, and then, uh, you know, that's that segment. Yeah. Uh, we come back, and I think we got another segment with Ambrose and the Doctor immediately after that, didn't we? Didn't we get like kind of like the uh, the ink blot test, except with actual pictures? Yeah, the word association. It was amazing. Yeah, the word association. He shows. Um... I loved this segment. This I, I'm gonna go ahead and say I think this was the funniest segment of the the bunch. Yeah, I would agree with that. Because if I, if I remember correctly, Doctor starts with uh, with an ink blot, and then Ambrose means says Thursday. <laughs> So nice, nice, uh, clever way to kind of promote smack. No, that was before. That was before he even showed him an ink blot. Oh, okay. Or a picture or anything. He just like when he said that we're gonna play word association. I'm gonna show you a picture and you tell me the first word that comes to your mind. Before he even went to grab the the papers, Ambrose just yelled Thursday, and I was like, okay, yes, this is off to a good start. And then he started with Triple H. Uh, and then then wasn't it? Uh, oh God, I, it was I forget. Triple what H. It was Triple H, and then. It was <clears> – <throat> oh, okay, so it was Triple H, and then it was Rollins, and then Reigns, and then Kane, and then Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and then Stephanie. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember what he said about Triple H or uh, or or uh, some, somebody – somebody I, it was Triple H. I don't remember that. And Rollins, I remember he said backstabber. No, Reigns no, no, was... no. Okay, I don't remember what he said for Triple H either, but I remember the rest. So for Rollins, he said scumbag. Right, scumbag. For Reigns, he said brother, which was, I just like, I audibly went, aww. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then for Kane, he said toothpaste, because... That's right, yeah. Because, you know, he was a dentist at one point. <laughs> Isaac Yankum for the win. <laughs> exactly. And then, of course, Hacksaw was ho, and then Stephanie was also ho, which was just perfect. Yeah, which would carry over throughout the night, which just shows you how over Dean Ambrose still is with the crowd. Uh, which was awesome to see. So, yeah, that segment was great. Oh, 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 for Triple H, he said irritable bowel syndrome. That's right, and then the doctor remarked how weird that was. That's right. Yeah, really great stuff from Dean here. I, I enjoyed that thoroughly. Uh, not, not not as, uh, well, I, I certainly enjoyed that, I should say, more than I enjoyed this. We got Cesaro and Tyson Kidd versus Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods. Now, while I love the fact that Cesaro and Tyson Kidd are on my TV screen and they are a tag team, I, I just hate the fact that the New Day went over here. And what was even weirder was Adam Rose is apparently in the corner of uh, Cesaro and Kid, which which I get to a degree, but it, but it still looks kind of weird. 
Uh, it, it was good back and forth, and we had, we had some good moments in this match. On the side of uh, Kid and Cesaro, we got that swing drop kick combo. Uh, that's a really cool double team move. I'm glad that's part of their repertoire. Can I just but, say, literally all six of the men involved in this match deserve so much better. Yeah. And now I'm sad. Yeah, they they really do. Um, but you know, then then the new day comes in. Xavier Woods, admittedly, like that's probably the only reason I am so happy about the new day is we get to see Xavier Woods do his thing because he is just so fun in the ring. Uh, comes in, you know, into the ring with the hot tag, gets a flurry of offense. In the end, I, I believe, yeah, it was Cesaro who uh, who gets him down to the floor. Rose tries to get the distraction, but it fails. And I thought Kid was going to get the roll up for the win, so I got excited. But uh, you know, there was a kick out, and then the double team maneuver. Kofi tagged himself in. I think Woods got the, the backbreaker, and Kofi got the double stomp. So New Day gets the win. Uh, you know, obviously there's going to be a bit of bias here on my end because I'm just a huge fan of Kid and Cesaro. But I, I just think, you know, they're the newer team. I liked what they did last week when they uh, masqueraded as Rosebuds to beat down the New Day. And I just feel like they've got more going on than these guys do right now, despite the fact that I'm a fan of, uh, you know, Xavier Woods and Big E. And, and, yeah, Kofi can certainly be entertaining. It's just a shame, like you said, all, all six guys could really be doing a lot more than what they are right now. So... With that, the New Day celebrate. Cole starts hyping up, you know, the Hall of Fame. Because, you know, the big announcement going around, you know, Randy Savage is expected to be, you know, announced tonight, all that Did, stuff. Am I the only one that felt legitimately insulted by them saying that he's expected to be inducted? Like, you are the one that does the inductions. Are we, like... Uh, what exactly was that supposed to even mean? Are they trying to say that they're not sure if they're going to go through with it or not? I, I guess. Because I don't know if it's possible to make a more heelish move than saying that Randy Savage is expected to be inducted into the Hall of Fame and then not following up on it. Yeah, I, I mean, you want to talk about backlash. Yeah, exactly. Like, if you acknowledge that it's expected to happen on the show where it would happen... Of course, it's going to happen. It's like, who comes up with this stuff? I, I really don't know, dude, because if it was their idea of trying to protect themselves, they got to understand something. It's one thing. What do you mean to, trying to protect themselves? What do you well, mean? again, doing, as you said, like maybe trying to give the coverage like we, we don't know. So we're just going to say expected. But like, you know, it's one thing if you change a pay-per-view card or a TV card or something like that, because it, it always goes with that caveat, you know, card expected to change. But no, people, John, that's the thing, though. They knew that he was being inducted into the Hall of Fame in like August. Dave Meltzer has been reporting that Randy the Macho Man Savage is going to be inducted into the 2015 Hall of Fame for months now. And WWE acted like they weren't sure about it, even though they've known about it for months. Well, not only that, I mean, even if you don't want to, like, put stock into Meltzer, which usually is, you know, right on the nose. I mean, Vince said it in, in his interview with Stone Cold, and, and what I was getting ready to say was, you know, it's one thing to do it with that kind of crap, but people have been waiting so long for Randy Savage to go into the Hall of Fame, and he's, like, the one big name everybody's wanted to see go in, that to say, oh, yeah, he, he's going to be in, and you announce it on WWE.com and everywhere else, only to pull the rug out with that expected crap, you know, it, it's like, yeah, that that's really smart. So... Just, you know, that idiocy aside, we see that Ric Flair is announced for next week's Raw reunion special. Uh, it's going to be Ric Flair. I thought I saw Shawn Michaels advertised, Scott Hall, and Hulk Hogan. Was there anybody else outside of that? I feel like I got all... all Flair? Four. Yeah, I said Flair. So, yeah, again, Flair, Michaels, Scott Hall, and Hulk Hogan, it seems yeah, like. Yeah, those are the four. Those are the four yeah. that were advertised, yeah. Yeah. So then after that, we get the big show promo that you were talking about that you kind of tuned out for to see the uh, the championship game. I uh, I personally thought this promo ha had its good moments. I even kind of chuckled a little bit because he's like, he comes out. I just love the kind of pompous douchiness here because he says, you know, the guy who said that all men are created equal clearly wasn't a giant. <laughs> I'm like, oh, man, we're going back to this well. Every John. single 
you're not actually going to go over this entire promo word for No, me. no, I'm just pointing out particular things, because I just think it's funny that he goes heel again, and we're going back to the well of him talking about how he's a giant, and what what can't you do when you're a giant? Like, he always does this shtick when he goes heel, and Dude, it always the Big to Show nothing. spending five minutes talking about how he's a giant and everybody else is insecure about their job status is almost as bad, if not as bad, as Ryback spending five minutes on top of an ambulance telling people that they probably don't know anything about nutrition. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, Big Show does that stuff, calling the crowd losers and, and just doing the, uh, you know, the buy the books, heel tactics. Reigns comes out. I won't even go over this. You want to talk about refusing to go over crap? I'm not touching this. He literally just told the Jack and the Beanstalk story, but replaced Jack with Roman Reigns, which somehow even made it less clever. Yeah, it was awful. But then, surprisingly enough, we go to the matchup, because as you noted earlier, Ashton, you know, Luke Harper does come out after this. We get the matchup that personally for me was match of the night. I enjoyed what these two did together. I thought this was a, a fun big man match. Uh, you know, Harper, I don't know if I even have a match of the night. I mean, I guess if you hold a gun to my head, I'd probably have to pick this, but that's just for lack of better options. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you'd certainly have a point there. But, I, I mean, needless to say, I do think these two guys, I, I liked what they were doing together. I wouldn't mind seeing another one-on-one -on -one match between these guys. And I'm not trying to say that this was a bad match by any means, but there weren't really any great matches on this show. There were a few decent matches. Like, Rollins Cena was all right if it wasn't for all of the crap that happened that was, you know, extracurricular. Uh, this match was all right if it would have gotten a little more time, and Ambrose Rusev was all right if it wouldn't have been cut short. Yeah, Ambrose Rusev really seemed like he was hitting a second gear, and then that abrupt ending just kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. But yeah, this, this was a this was a fun matchup for me. I, I enjoyed this. Uh, you know, Reigns got his offense in with the apron drop kick and all that stuff. Uh, th th there were some okay teases. I mean, I, I knew they weren't going to pan out, but, you know, Big Show at one point uh, provided a distraction. Harper got a super kick, and, and, and you knew that wasn't going to be it. I was honestly hoping that maybe they'd do something different, and Big Show would just be <sighs> such a thorn in Reigns' side that maybe Harper would get the lariat and he would get the upset win. But, I mean, clearly that wasn't going to happen. Reigns does get the spear. And uh, to your point, Ashton, because I know you called it on Puitoff, uh, Reigns does get the clean victory, which honestly I wasn't even anticipating that. I expected another DQ finish. So Reigns does get the win. Uh, again, would not mind seeing these guys uh, lock it up again in the future. Uh, Big Show rushes the ring after that, and he attacks Reigns. And, you know, long story short, he hits the knockout punch, and he lays Reigns out. <sighs> if only this match happened a month ago, I'd be all excited about Reigns getting an Intercontinental title shot and not being in the main event. Yeah, I know, right? I just, I still just have really bad feelings about it. I mean, heck, if they would go that route, if they would give Reigns the Intercontinental title, they could have him and Rusev unify the mid-card belts at WrestleMania. Yeah, really. And then we could introduce an Iron Man championship, which I've been clamoring for for years. That dream will never die. But, uh, because it'll probably never happen. <laughs> it, it's not happening. 